We're celebrating a milestone. Most people <laughs> celebrate their hundredth podcast. This is number three, guys. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we figured it out. What did yeah. we figure out? I don't know. You tell us, Mitch. You tell us. What did we figure out? Honestly, from our conversations, I feel like I've figured out less about life. <laughs> what makes you say that, <laughs> dude? Just because talking with you guys, like, um, you have such like different perspectives and so for me to be able to listen to you guys it completely throws me sideways with, like in the best way possible yeah know? i relate i understand there's the the pillars or there's like this framework of of information where the first layer is unconscious incompetence so like you don't know <laughs> what you don't know and that's good but then you become consciously incompetent where like you realize oh i don't know this stuff then you become consciously competent where you are conscious that you're learning stuff and you're like running around like oh i know this stuff and then you become unconsciously competent where like you know the stuff and it's just a part of you and you don't have to spend energy like storing all these files in the front of the in the brain there they go that, that was the one i was going to ask about what about the unconsciously confident? <laughs> there it is. That's Wolfgang well, well, right there. Well, We're on a well, path to when, that. And when that happens, then then the universe brings you all the way back to the start. Because the universe <laughs> is like, all right, you think you're conscious and competent now? I'm going to throw you a curveball and make you feel humbled. <laughs> yeah. that's, when, that's, when, <laughs> that's when you just get amnesia for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's so many different things to know. It's like, you know, you could be a master in... Uh, in strength training but then someone just cracks an egg on your head that you know they ask you about your soul and you just you're like oh my god now i'm unconscious now i'm incompetent again that's so true like i was actually i've been experiencing this mo more recently um especially me training my clients like i i second guessed myself recently like in the past week or two but then I look over and I don't mean to compare myself, but I look over at other trainers working with their clients and I'm like, dude, I got nothing to worry about, you know, like I'm doing a good <laughs> job. Um, but for some reason, like there's times throughout my month where it's like self doubt comes in. Like if, if I'm even competent of training other people at this point, and I don't know, what do you guys think that is? I think that's a question you can answer yourself uh whether consciously or unconsciously <laughs> but i i definitely resonate with some of that i was talking to uh, a good friend yesterday about like the the whole enneagram thing and the the part where like there's that number that just forgets the success they have and like kind of forgets the the stuff they were doing right and i have some of that and i just like my friend yesterday was like you're fascinating and i'm like Right, I am. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. But it's like, I, if you forget, and I think you might have some of that too, Mitch. But like, yeah. you do things great, and then after a while, it's like, what was I doing again? I don't. Yeah. Like yeah. you gotta remember the basics. Somebody has to like remind you the basics of it, and like remind you that like, yeah, you're doing great. By the way, it's like, oh right, I am. Yeah, that's a good. That's a really good point. Yeah, Chase, man. Like, what number is that? I would say that he's probably throwing around a nine kind of mentality there. They kind of lose themselves in, in other people. Nines are very other oriented. Um, but I think like what you're, I mean, and I, I, before I move on from like the thing that you're talking about, Mitch, of like just comparing yourself to other coaches. And that's a hard thing when you're trying to help people. And then you look at other people that are helping people and maybe they're helping people in a different way. And it makes you think that what you're doing is wrong, but like everybody needs a different kind of help. And that's where the Enneagram is powerful too, Wolfgang. Mm. Like everybody needs a different thing in order to be fulfilled. And if you're a coach, like maybe the most important thing you can do today is teach someone how to deadlift with proper technique, but the mm. way that you're going to give it to them is like, maybe they need it in a fun way. Maybe they need it in a science backed way. Maybe they need it in a physical demonstration way. Maybe they need it in some sort of 
I have to think that I came up with the answer way. So it's like, everyone's <laughs> doing it differently, but at the end of the day, like, you know how to teach a deadlift. So like, you just do it in the most Mitchy way you can. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a real good point. <laughs> just, I'm waiting to see what Mitch has to say. Just letting him think it, think through it. Honestly, I, I really don't have anything to say to that because you guys are right. Like, it's really owning your style, not, mm. not, um, and like, I, I guess the thing for me right now is that I'm struggling with owning my style. But I also want to be open-minded to growing as a coach, you know, like, like mm -hmm. I want to really have my style down and like, yeah, this is what I do. If they have a question, this is how I answer it. Um, but then also being really open to like changing, you know, and not being ignorant and finding that balance in between the two. Yeah, I understand. I understand completely. Um, speaking of, uh, <laughs> of conscious incompetence as i have earlier completely ignored the perfect segue that pitch that pitch that mitch pitched at me when he said humbleness <laughs> yeah i was waiting for that i was like we talked about this <laughs> i was like nah. <laughs> so i want to ask you guys what does uh let's 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 do the thing mm. we did last time first what what is the definition of humbleness, right? Mm. Are you gonna look it up? Yes, Jamie. <laughs> He's not here yet. <laughs> Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> I don't even know. Is does Joe Rogan still have a guy named Jamie? I haven't listened yes, to that. Yes, that, that guy's still there. Uh, yeah. Let's see, humbleness: the state of being humble or low, humility, meekness. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, all all of those all of those are the same meaning with different words okay so the state of being humble or low humility or meekness now that we got that out of the way i was thinking that it was always important to look at what something actually means and then also look at what our perspectives are on it uh and not but saying that like one is wrong mean? yes that's what i'm about to ask oh. what does it mean to you guys now that we have the definition I want to hear the perspectives as well, because the, like one is not does not make the other wrong. I think all of them are valid. So is Both humbleness the, the same as humble? Being humble, mm -hmm. yeah, is the, yeah. it's the verb of being humble. Humbleness. It, it, so. Yeah, Mitchie, this you might get like like how handsomeness is the same as being handsome. That might be more yeah. relatable for you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'll I'll. Uh, I, cause I guess I've been thinking about, right. Cause you mentioned it in our, in our little private chat, like humility, humbleness has been on your mind. I like the word humility because it also adds this flavor of life that I, um, breathe, which is just humor and, and how humility is built into that and how, if you kind of approach life with humility, that can mean like approaching life in a way that doesn't take it too seriously. Not that I'm calling life a big joke, but in a way that like, you're going to do is, your though. best. <laughs> yeah. But any, anyway, but um, yeah, in a way that you, you stride forward with humbleness and humility, knowing that there's always a bigger fish, knowing that there's always a better coach, knowing that there's always uh, people above and below you and being okay with uh, being a beginner at whatever the hell it is you want to do. Um, not apologizing for your shortcomings, but maybe only apologizing when you fail to correct those shortcomings. So like, I think humility is, is about owning where you're at with a like, to me, it's owning where you're at, but also kind of with a smile um, and, and just hmm. like a playfulness. Hmm. Mickey, what do you think? I like that. Honestly, I think that's probably the answer to what I was experiencing with um, coaching recently. Like I, I was missing that like humility, that um, light and fun side, because sometimes you just like, I just get caught up in being too serious. And this actually segues perfectly into um, what I sent out in the group chat the other day is like, is there a time 
where being serious is like necessary. You know what I mean? And, and I think by me being serious in the gym with my clients is when I find like tension and resistance. Mm. So I'm lacking that humility or I'm not lacking it. I'm just not practicing it. Would you say he- carefreeness could also help you? I think it too. I think the word might be, uh, and I don't know, it, it's the opposite of control though. Cause I don't know if, I think that there's a time and a place to get serious. Like, you know, you sit down with your, uh, like say you're in a relationship and you got to talk about something serious. Like, like, you know, someone's in grave trouble. It's like, let's get serious. That matters. But I think there's, I think at the root of this question, and I could be reframing it poorly, but I think the root is control and like giving up control. Cause like to me, like when I'm with a personal training client, if I'm trying to just control everything, I think that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And there's like an aggressive nature to that where it's like, I'm going to seriously just apply everything I know and just do this in a stone cold way, but it's all for the sake of control. Whereas if I give away control, I can do it without cracking any jokes, but I'm just going with whatever the universe throws at me. Um, You know, like there's no such thing as, as that feeling of wanting control. It's just how you're responding to the lack of it all around you. (laughs) Um. It's supposedly the three things that we're taught to feel like need the most are um, control, uh, security, and what was the other one? Comfort. Yeah. And love, admiration. Uh, gotta be a I don't story. remember the third one, sadly, but it, it went into like the what you said with the control stuff. It's like some like at least most of us like need that control is like learning how to like let it not control you i guess is powerful and that's what that care uh, what carefreeness i think comes into it um i think i think the third one was the third one was certainty mm. I think. So, but they all blend right because learning how to kind of let go of the need for control is is embracing uncertainty and with that comes that carefreeness that we talk about, I think. Well, there's, it's, there's, there's a lot of elements to it for sure, but that's what I can think of right now. <laughs> so what I'm taking from it is that we got to keep shit light. <laughs> you got to keep shit authentic. authentic. And laugh, oh, and yeah, laugh at it, right? Like, and laugh at when, because like, to be honest, a lot of my life is just a big, joke like i have no idea what's happening in my days like if you actually most of us think about the things that are happening in my day yeah i can try and uh get the laws of manifestation to understand that and oh this is why this is happening but i'm gonna be honest i have no idea what's happening but i i feel more comfortable in that not knowingness when i can keep it light and not make it so serious because when, mm. when, when I mix serious in with control and trying to figure out the universe, then, man, that's when life gets really, it's really just, not fun. You become, like, just contracted, like, rigid. I can, like, see it. For <laughs> not sure. now, but, like, I can, I can understand it. I can feel it. Feel what your energy is like when you are in that state. Yeah. Or, and and I, think I about how it. that state is all just an unwillingness to surrender though, to one like honesty of just where you're at and to like taking that honesty with humility. So I think those two like really go together. Um, Cause like, like, yeah, humble. Like we we were talking about it, like with this lightheartedness, but I, cause that's like where I intuitively go. But I also see like, like Kendrick Lamar, like sit down, be humble in a very serious way. Like acknowledge where you're at. Stop acting like you're privileged. Like, sit down and, and be in your spot. Um, but granted, like Kendrick Lamar is a nice guy. Um, so anyway. hey, go on the podcast. Let's chat. Yeah, Just, Kendrick. You're truly a good guy. Uh, <laughs> I bet he is. I bet he has a lot of cool stories. Um, yeah. Which perfect segue that like stay in your spot is, is my perspective on humbleness. Um, and like I said last week, to me, humbleness is bullshit. 
And I'm going to go into my TED talk as to why that is. <laughs> oh, cute Wait, you music. got a TED talk? <laughs> no, but I, I got some thoughts that I'm going to share. And then you guys are going to add to that. And boom, that's how we do a podcast. Who needs uh, a TED talk when you have a Zoom call? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to my Zoom call. Um, so humility. I, I looked at that while you're all talking. Uh, so the first one is the quality or condition of being humble which yeah, they, 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 go, they go hand in hand. Then it's the state or character of being humble and then freedom from pride and arrogance. That's good, right? Like, you know, you're not, you're not being controlled by pride or arrogance or other stuff. Um, but then it also means lowly, lowly, lowliness of mind, a low estimate of oneself or self-abasement. Um, it also goes into an act of submission. Um, and then it goes into other crazy shit that is historical. That doesn't matter right now. Anyway, those are like the big three ones, right? Meanings. And that's why humbleness is bullshit to me. Because when I think of humbleness, I think of that part of it, not the freedom from arrogance, but I think of the, of the lack of self-esteem, of the stay in your spot and don't think about it too much, of that, that holding you back. And I know why that is. Uh, that is because growing up in Romania, I've seen like adults, parents everywhere around me having that mentality of like, I just got to be humble. I just got to stay in my place. I just got to do my thing, stay in my lane. Don't think too much about it. Don't ask questions. Um, don't think about what I'm great at. And then they just go and work 15 hour days and just are completely miserable and get nowhere in life. Because I think that, and I think this is kind of the mainstream approach of, of humbleness. Again, we're, we're, we're taking all that healthy part of humbleness and putting it aside to look at the bullshit part. That's what I'm focusing on right now, just to clarify for everyone. And I think this mainstream way is like, it's so hyper-focused on just stay in your fucking lane that if you, if you have that as a foundation to your, to your being, you start like, because you're not allowed to like go outside of humbleness you're not allowed to think about your values. You know, uh, like, you know, you then what's left for you is to only think about your lack, is to only think about what you don't have, what you can't do. And that creates the lack of self confidence, right? Um, so, how do you, if you're stuck in that, or if you find yourself in that mentality, how do you get out of that? And, with that, I've actually asked you guys to write uh, your features and benefits this week. Um, and you don't have to go and read through them. I'm not sitting here for five hours to read through them. But if you want to give a few examples of what you wrote, and more, more importantly, what your experience was like internally while writing those is what I want to hear from you guys. Yeah. So, so let me tie these strings between this. So Please you're do. saying you asked us to, to write down our values, which, which I did like, like the benefits, what we bring to the world. Yes. And what, what is your value as a human? Like, what are we kind of like defining ourselves? Like what are our defining features? And that is going to paint the lane that humility would suggest we should stay in. Right. Like it's, to kind of stay in your lane. No, it's the exit from it. Because when you know what your values are, you, you go out of humbleness. You go into, into self-confidence. You know what you have to bring to the table. Then you have authenticity available. You have giving your gift to the world becomes much easier when you know what your gift fucking is. And I feel mm. like most of the people on this planet don't know. They never even think about that. Like, hey, what are your features and benefits? I don't know. I never think about like what I'm good at is what most people would say. I think at yeah, least yeah. from my experience. Yeah. Because like what your job is might not be the same as like the inherent gifts yes. that you have, like the, you yes. <laughs> kind of like the, uh, the, the, the nature and nurture just kind of gave you, well, not gave you, but these gifts got kind of molded into your character and we want to take a peek at those. Yeah. And hopefully this inspires people to grab a piece of paper after the podcast and do it themselves. Yeah, I liked it because you just messaged us and you were like, write down, you know, write down your defining features. And then you said the word 50 of them. 
And yes. I was like that, like I have to come up with 50 good things, you know, 50 things that I bring to the world. That's a lot to offer. Yes. I'm like, you know, sometimes you think that, you know, like, like, I think we kind of hit it at this earlier. Like, it's easy to think you're not bringing too much to the world. But when you asked me to do that, I was oh, like, you, everybody can probably write hundreds of things that they're not good at easily because <laughs> yeah, we're taught yeah. to think that way we're conditioned to think that way but taking a step back and thinking what you're actually good at might be troublesome sometimes and right. and i just want to back back up just a little bit to where i think what you were speaking about the side of humble that can be negative um is like complacency right would that yeah. be the yeah that like, like brings being, that with it right right so you're saying that and, and I don't mean to back back up too much, but you're saying that complacency is a dangerous side of humble. Is that what you're saying? I think so. Yes. That is, that is a good way to put it. Okay. Complacency, which can spiral you down into even worse things and eventually leading to you not giving your gift to the world, which is like the worst thing. <laughs> Cause I think everybody has value to bring and it's about figuring out, figuring out what that is. When, when, you, when you first asked us to write that down, those 50 things, I immediately like felt inside of me like, um, like uh, I was like, man, I'm not worth like these 50 things, you know, like, <laughs> like, like I immediately felt the, the self-love that isn't happening there at that yeah. moment. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt like I, yeah, I felt like I, I wasn't worthy of writing 50 things down, but, but did you as do it I, anyway? yeah. And so as I kept writing them down, I was like, wow, I haven't like put myself into this state of like, huh. I guess you could call it like gratitude state yeah. where you're just grateful for who you are um, in this. And I haven't, like, it was very, it was very obvious to me how uncomfortable it was for, for, for me to think so positively about myself. Yeah. And then it could go even further for some people. I think they'll experience the thing where they write them down, but then if the, like, it could be like, Hey, show this to other people. And they're like, Oh no, <laughs> that's deeply uncomfortable. I don't want you to see my 50 features and benefits, but if you ask them, Hey, what do you hate about yourself? Oh, let me tell you. Oh, have a seat. Let me tell you what, all the things that I hate about myself. <laughs> yeah, man. I heard a saying one time that it said that no one puts quarters in the ass kicking machine like like we can. <laughs> That's a good one. I like but that. But no one can put the quarters in the ass kicking machine like we can. Okay. So Chase, you look like you want to say something. Oh, no, dude. I'm just di digesting this because uh, I'm just relating to, to Mitchie in a sense where to be honest, like my list is it is 25 and 25. So the whole way across, and I think this this paints hum humility too. The whole way okay. across my list is what I bring to the world, right? That's what I kind of interpret it as. And then yeah. one was the good side of the trait. And then two was the potentially destructive side of the trait. Whereas everything is almost the same exact trait. Um Whereas like the first thing on my list is spirit of adventure. I'm like, that is, that's a good trait that I bring to things. But then that's number two, sure. number two is frenetic escapism. <laughs> <laughs> like if things are not good, I'm like the first guy that's like, Hey, let's go on an adventure. Cause this is us. <laughs> Dude, I am frenetically adventurous. <laughs> I understand that part of it. I don't know if I do it to escape, to try to escape, but I definitely just constantly want to just go in a direction and not not stop. Yeah, whether I'm it, living a good life or not, I'm just I want to go because there's so much, there's so much out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I know that's just kind of where I I looked at it because I was thinking about the word humble too, and like how we've throughout this podcast already said like the good and bad things of it. Like so much of any trait is just how it expresses itself. Like, like adventurousness could be good or bad. It's just like, how do I want to feed that thing? So like mm. in doing this list, I did allow some negative uh, behaviors maybe to seep into it, but it's all like, it was, it was allowing me to paint a clear picture of this trait and then what it looks like if I express it healthfully and what it looks like if I express it unhealthfully. 
So it's like, let's go on an adventure or let's escape. And that's kind of how I did my list. So that in and of itself is what was valuable to you to write. Yeah, it was a little map. Yeah, because the trick is here, there's no wrong answer to this exercise. <laughs> it's it's more like a mirror by the end of it. It's it allows you to introspect. So that's why I didn't really give you and that many humbling. rules to it. Yeah, it's humbling. Yeah, the good side, maybe. <laughs> it's 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 I think it also inspires confidence for sure. Um so again, uh you guys can read as much of it as you want. You can move on, it doesn't matter, but you yeah, know, your experience is what it's at. Chase, where, why do you think you chose to write the good and the bad of like each trait? Yeah, I mean, well, when you asked us to write down our features, I just, I, you know, there it goes. Like the immediate thing that you want to do is maybe look at areas where you could improve. But mm-hmm. I didn't, I, you know, I also want to look at areas that are valuable. I mean, you caught me at a weird time with this too, because I've been like, rewriting a professional resume so i'm like writing down <laughs> interesting it, i'm also yeah 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 it's very interesting because i'm also like working on like nailing down a resume which looks at s- features of me such as increased student enrollment by x percent via organizing marketing campaigns you know like this is the kind that, of features that is a benefit yeah what is the feature to that benefit yeah, and, is and it marketing oh yeah, that's skills? a benefit. That right. is a benefit. And then the feature of me behind it would be um, like, so like I'm writing benefits on the resume. The <laughs> features are kind of on this list where the, the feature go. might be um, ability to connect the dots between different ideas, like creative thinking mm-hmm. is the feature. But the benefit is then like, you know, increased student enrollment at my day job and like that's what the corporate world wants to see but then you two guys just want me to talk about the the parts of my soul that allowed that to happen <laughs> which in turn but the discovering those yeah which in turn discovering that gives you more clarity over what you have to bring to the table mm-hmm. which makes your resume better as well yeah because there's a heart behind it yeah honestly and i'm gonna i'm probably gonna just transition topics real quick um just bringing it back to talking about humble and i realized that for me the reason why i do a lot of the things in my day is to become humble again because for me i grew up as a hockey player and um i have the tendency to because when you're playing any sport at such a high level you have to have so much fake confidence in yourself for you to like achieve being a really <laughs> great athlete that it's so fake that it's not healthy. Or you know what I mean? Like you yeah. have to become so engrossed in yourself and, and, and your abilities that it's actually fake and not healthy. And yeah. so I've had those tendencies my whole life because I've had to practice them and, or I've chosen to practice them, but I've noticed now that that side of me tries to come back every single day. And so for me seeking like cold showers, like the reason why I truly take cold showers is so the universe can like beat back into me that, (laughs) that, that being humble, like, you know what I mean? Like traveling, like the reason why I'm so obsessed with traveling the world is because you cannot be arrogant and travel. You know what I mean? Like it completely, whenever you think, that you have something figured out like the universe. And so what I've, what I've like not really realized that I was doing until now is like just beating humble into me every (laughs) single day, like heading outside and walking barefoot in the snow, you know, like I feel like completely beaten down by the universe to where you can't even be like, Oh yeah, I'm so strong. Like, it's like, fuck, this is cold. And I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know, dude. Does, so, does that make sense to you guys? It does. I some points based on what you just said. Uh, you're beating humbleness into you, or rather, the, <laughs> the universe is beating humbleness into you because the arrogance keeps coming back. And you got you nailed what I think arrogance means is that you don't not actually confident. So arrogance comes from lack, right? It, For it sure, comes it's from, insecure. From, from insecurity, exactly. What is uh, like authenticity and value and knowing your own value, I think comes from a place of confidence and that therefore it becomes much healthier. But anyway, um, 
I would ask, what are you running from, Mitch? But you've kind of just told us. So my next question would be, why are you running from it? Because, and then the next thing I would say is, you say the universe is, is, is beating humbleness into you. Mm. Almost like there's no space for it inside of you. So it has to be like pushed in forcefully. Right. And you also say the universe, but everything you've te- you're telling me, all the, all the ways in which the universe is beating humbleness into you, to me sounds like just things that you're doing to punish yourself for being <laughs> arrogant. And the I universe, am the universe <laughs> punishing myself. And the universe is just, just sitting there like, look at this dude. Holy this shit. guy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help him. I keep, I keep bringing him arrogance so that he yeah. can accept it and let go of it. No, you're, but he you're just right. keeps resisting it. <laughs> you're exactly like, like the question is, why do I need to perform these actions to be humble? Like, why, why do I need the cold showers and everything like that? Which, I mean, they're healthy things anyways to begin with, right? So, And I'm sure, like, I think at the very root of it is just insecurity in me as a being. Like, um, like I went so long without, like, during my life of being something that I wasn't and then finding out, like, in the past few years. And now it's like, whoa, I'm really insecure with just who I am as a being. And I think that's why... Um, I have the tendencies to become arrogant because I'm just very insecure with who I am as like a being right now. Mm. So mm. tell us how their list went then. <laughs> well, the this list should be started, really interesting. Well, the crazy thing is I don't have the list on me, but the main thing that I remember besides the uncomfortable feeling was that the list started out, which this will explain a lot about me as well, a lot of physical things. So a lot of like, very externally recognizable, like a fit body or something like that. You know what I mean? And then I started realizing like, damn, I'm just a surface level motherfucker. (laughs) 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 And then I started trying to dig deeper on like, um, oh, I'm kind or things like that or empathetic. And, but that was really hard for me to start doing is to recognize that I'm just really obsessed with the physical. Mm. I mean, you've done that for so long in your life that that's the the obvious values that come to mind, right? Right. Uh, Just like with me, like the obvious values, the first values that I wrote down were like people skills and self-improvement skills and stuff like, like the stuff that I've been doing for nearly a decade. And then after that, it's like, you know, like maybe in like in the 40 somethings, I was like passionate, fun, carefree. Everybody likes, you know, somebody like that's passionate about something. It like inspires you. So like passion inspires others. Carefree. Everybody likes feeling carefree around the person. And then um, what did I say? Fun. Everybody likes having fun. So that those are those like three features and benefits of me. But like that's not immediately obvious to anyone uh, when when writing those things. Like are you like nobody thinks I'm going to write down my vibe. Mm. They don't think of they don't think that's valuable, right? But it is. That's the thing. That's why there's no wrong answer. Is is anything can be a feature and benefit of of you as a person. And there's always more there than than we think. There's a lot of features and benefits hidden inside all of us. And staying humble will only make you be blind to them. I'm gonna complacent. Okay. Yeah, complacent. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. The, that's why I said humble. <laughs> humble. Yeah. No, no, no. You're right. Because there's the distinction of like, we write out all these features and that's the, the stuff, the good stuff we bring to the world. And then like, I think the thing that gives you a bad taste in your mouth about humbleness is the kind of the stay in your lane mentality of yes. the world. Yes. Um, whereas, that's why like, I said the mainstream part of it, because yeah, that's what yeah. everybody's doing. Yeah. Whereas like I, I reference, I'm going to pull it back to Kendrick because like, <laughs> this dude is on stage, like writing a song basically to himself about like, hey, be humble. And I think when a humble man who is pushing like a humanitarian agenda is on a stage in front of thousands of people telling himself to be humble, you know, <sighs> like he's not staying in his lane, being humble. And that is that is the 
contrarian view of humility that culture celebrates, but at the same time, turn around when someone like him says the wrong thing in the wrong interview and, you know, like this crazy proselytizing culture that we're in, they're going to turn at him and be like, stay in your lane. Whereas it all depends on how we're viewing humility. If it like, like Mitchie, you being humble and getting in the cold shower, like you're not staying in your lane. The universe put heat into your house. Well, not the universe, but like <laughs> through the universe, some man put a hot water tank in that basement of yours and you can access it by turning the other dial. But the fact that you're not, you're getting out of your lane and being humble. Like I'm trying to justify humility here because like, yeah. I, I feel so, like it's dirty, but it could also be really, really helpful. What do you think, man? So, so would you say that in order to achieve like the healthy humbleness, not, not the complacency part that we need to actively seek discomfort. Oh. Like can humbleness come from being comfortable? I think humbleness at its most healthy is you being at ease with yourself. And, where you don't and, even have to think about it. You yeah. just know you're, you're, you just know you're good enough and you're like, yeah. I, you don't, I don't have to say it. I don't have to do anything. It's just the, the pure confidence, the Dude, ease. That's such a zen place to be at. Like, oh, I don't need to travel to experience it. Like, oh, I, I don't need that discomfort. It's like, I'm going to travel because like, I want to. I don't to. need any cold showers. <laughs> I don't need this. Like, yeah, like, and that is such a really enlightened state to be at. And I can honestly say that I am not there yet. <laughs> but you can aim towards that, right? Be inspired by, by such a... I wouldn't say ideal because I think ideal makes people think that it's unattainable. Um, it's definitely attainable. Um, but this goes to the first thing we talked in the, in the like one of the things we talked in the first episode, which is like, you're already good enough, but you also have to be aware of the things that make you good enough <laughs> in a way, right? Of, the, of your features and benefits. And the reason I was like raising my arms up and being like, yeah, when Chase was talking is because it's the perfect segue into this dirty part of, of humility and humbleness, which is virtue signaling. Man, people love virtue signaling. And I think it's disgusting. Explain it. <laughs> yeah, virtue yeah. signaling is, is um, when somebody like goes and does something good. And not necessarily. An example of it is they go and give $5 to a hobo and then they go tell all their friends, I gave $5 to a hobo. I'm so fucking generous. It's the Look opposite of integrity. Like integrity is yeah. when you do the right thing just because it's the right thing to do. Because you virtue. want to. Yeah. yeah, and virtue signaling is when you donate $5 to some cause you hardly care about on Facebook and then share it with all your friends. Exactly. Virtue signaling is putting those French flags on your Facebook profile when whatever happened in France years ago, even though you don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> virtue signaling can also be... Um, an easy way to feel good about yourself. Yes. <laughs> However, it's destructive to you and the people around you. And it's it's that thing. Like, you, humanitarian goes on, on stage and he talks about all the millions donated. Well, like, he doesn't care. He cares about his tax stuff that goes with the donation. Like, he doesn't give a shit about helping. Uh, not, I don't mean Kendrick. I mean, just like the, this yeah, hypothetical yeah. example of a humanitarian uh, going on stage. Like, in the gaming industry, this is big. All the nastiest companies... But like big uh, conventions and gatherings will go on stage and be like, our company, which is known to be just the most evil piece of shit in the world, donated one million to this uh, this charity, which we also happen to own. <laughs> like Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah, that's just like, <laughs> and and we've become entrapped in this like mentality where people think virtue signaling is good. They think that going out there and just being like, I am the best because I do these things and that thing, and it's like. That's coming from like a rotten place inside of you. That's that's arrogance, right? Um, yeah, that's not humble. That's and not humility. I, yo, yeah. I just got a notification. We have less than a minute left of this Zoom <laughs> chat. All right, we're going to jump back into this like nothing happened. Everyone's here. Yes. So, so to, to compile everything I said, there's all these nasty parts, 
of of humbleness in quotation marks i guess but even in the definition you saw there's parts that are unhealthy to humbleness there's meanings meekness you know staying in your lane being weak uh virtue signaling which i think is people being like i'm not good enough so here's the things i do uh, like me please like me please but then real humbleness and humility is is you're just ah, it's effort let that's that's why i say don't be humble be authentic authentic is authenticity is effortless authenticity is being in touch with your true self it's knowing your values it's all these things that i just talked about that i'm not going to just fucking repeat again because <laughs> you've let us listen to it for the past 50 minutes um so that's the distinction don't don't be humble be yourself be authentic mm, i like that and it's and it's in a way it's effortless to be authentic but in a way so here's where i go woo woo and i look at this list hell yeah of features <laughs> and for me i i did it a little obscurely where each feature had like a thing to run towards and a thing to run away from and as i'm doing this uh you mentioned aiming aiming for uh healthy humbleness you know like yes. maybe that's something you can aim for and i almost feel like everything on this list of 50 features um half hitting the mark half missing the mark i feel like it's all in a way missing the mark of my essence because i see the duality of all of these things and how for example let's go back to the spirit of adventure versus escapism and how they can be related i feel like both of those actions is me missing the mark of just being okay with essence because if everything that is a power was formed to cover up an insecurity then even when i'm running full cylinders in a healthy way enlightening the world around me it is also a way that i miss the mark of essence behind it like i feel like it's all built good and bad uh, to keep me distracted um in this thing called ego virtues values benefits features all even these features are i feel like they're inherent ways of me missing this mark in some way but i don't know how to hit the mark unless i'm some buddhist monk who doesn't communicate <laughs> with the world right and say i don't need to do the 50 things and leave the paper blank yeah <laughs> uh you're going deep but <laughs> i have a question for you my uh chase yes do you identify as a person that really likes balance? Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You see what I you see what I'm going with this? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Dismantle it. You went I told you go do your go write your values and you went I need to balance this out with the bad traits. Mm -hmm. And then you felt like you missed the point of the essence because I think what happened is you unconsciously tapped into your, into your ego instead, that ego being the identity of you wanting to have balance in everything or enjoying balance or being like, oh, if I just lean towards the values, then I'm not balanced anymore. I'm not me. Hmm. You kind of see this? If, 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 you know, I could be completely incorrect about this. This is all about what you're feeling, like if my words resonate or not. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I don't know. It, it might, that might not be exactly it. Just since each one, I feel like, and now in an arrogant way, like I feel like I'm <laughs> on the healthy side of all of these. Um, whereas, I think you are, like, yes. And like, but I, there's definitely some I'm on the negative side of. Like there is a, so one of my pairings is insatiable curiosity. And I put that as a good thing. But then mm -hmm. if I feed it with bad food, if I feed it with bad intentions, then it's a scattered disposition where I'm just <laughs> kind of hit, hitting the sampler platter of life. Um, and, and to me, I'm on the good side, but I, I, I was more so just looking at it thinking, yeah, that's good. And I am, I guess I am striving for balance here because I wanted to see what the flip side would look like. But I also kind of look at this as if the essence of me is a flat line and the positive is a blip above and the negative is a blip below. 
but both of those blips is a mechanism for me to avoid the flat line. Interesting. Interesting way to put it. Um, <laughs> I drank too much coffee and I'm just going, man. <laughs> no, it's good. It's really good. I get though, what you're saying. What do you think, Mitch? Man, I think those words are so powerful. And the way you can just introspect is just beautiful, you know? And like, I feel like that to bring us back to like being humble, like, yeah, exactly what Wolfgang was saying. Like, don't strive for being humble, strive for being authentic. And if you can authentically know yourself like that, then humbleness will just be a benefit. At right. That point. Yeah. Exactly. It just is that. Um, but it, it takes a lot of introspection to be authentic. Yes. Yes, it does. It because does. how can you be authentic if you've never truly looked like, like how can you be authentic if you don't <laughs> know who you are? Exactly. <laughs> and exactly the point of these exercises. It's the same I feel way. Like I'm like 20 fitness. steps behind right now. <laughs> no, you're not. You're exactly no. where you need to be. Um, yeah, it's the same as fitness, right? I'm sure, I'm sure we can take this back to fitness easily. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. you gotta do some exercises so you know what you're at, you know what you gotta do, you gotta know where you gotta go. It's like I don't know how strong my legs are, so I'm gonna go try to do some squats and see what I'm at. <laughs> right. And, and if, being if honest with my your knees form, pop, right? <laughs> then that's bad. So I know I'm in a bad place. <laughs> right. But it's so easy to just like stack on the weight and not worry about your form because you don't want to even yeah. spend spend the time to correct that form. Right. And how like do you, you don't even yeah? And how do you work on your form? In front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta look at yourself and you gotta accept that, oh, this, you know, my back is bending the wrong way here and all these things. And yeah, it's just like that. There's exercises. And one of them is the one that I, I brought you guys today with. Uh, so I hope everybody does these. And I hope uh, once you do, if you'd like to share your thoughts on your experience, we'd love to hear it. Send us an email with that at leaffeelingbetteragmail.com. Yeah, yeah. It's write down your 50 benefits and features you bring here yeah features and benefits you don't you don't have to write that in the email you write that for yourself and then yeah. you tell us what your experience was yes because i would love to hear uh how that improved or just brought chaos to your life in a way that is going to help you elevate yourself in the future <laughs> honestly that that might be why i've been feeling the way i feel like been feeling since you sent that because it has brought chaos to my life in a way <laughs> where it's like Dude, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we think we have like everything structured, but in reality, that structure is not like actually serving us. And, and then we're humbled. just like throwing, throwing that, ripping that apart, throwing chaos into that, throwing that curveball in. Uh, sometimes exactly what we need. And I think this, this whole exercise though, does showcase the amount that we let our emotions influence our ideas of ourselves. And I think mirrors are an important metaphor here because I see first the mirror metaphor. Let's pull it to fitness first. Whereas people like to look in the mirror when they just did bicep curls and they got a pump and they're like, yeah, all right, let me go look in the mirror because yeah. I know I look good. Whereas if they are questioning their form on their squats, they don't want to look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Where and, and then in, in reality, in life, think about how many mirrors are in a house and <laughs> how people look in those mirrors. They'll, they'll look into it when they're getting dressed up for work and being like, all right, I look good. I'm good to go. But like, if you're just slobbing around, not feeling great about yourself, you just avoid looking in the mirror. <laughs> so when you do this exercise and you're not feeling good, it's going to be hard. If you do this exercise and you're feeling good about yourself, it's going to be easy. But if you do this exercise and you have the list and then you feel bad about it, or you, if you feel bad about yourself and you have the list, then that's like your good mirror to remind you like, okay, I'm in the dumps, but like, look at all this that I am capable of bringing. It's a yeah. good thing to have. Yes, it is. And it's good to, to, you know, revise that as much as you want. As you go through life, do it every year. I don't know, every month, whatever works for you. Um, here's an interesting thing with the mirror metaphor is uh, people 
avoid it, but there's also something else to mirrors is when you walk around the house and you get a glimpse of yourself and that glimpse makes you cringe and it makes you like, I don't want to look at myself. So like every time, but you can't because there's mirrors everywhere. You're always going to see yourself. So you see that glimpse and you get like a pain, a pain. You just get a little bit of pain every time you look in and you glimpse yourself in the mirror. If you're, if, especially if your self-image is, is not coherent to who you truly are, which is greatness. Um, but that's the thing. I, I think I've mentioned this exercise in an earlier episode. And if I didn't, I'm going to say it now again. Um, take 10 minutes and just stand in front of your fucking mirror. And the thing is, those glimpses, you get that initial pain, but then you start investigating why those glimpses are there and it allows you to like just let things come out right come up and come out so there's that initial there's that initial pain and because people only get the initial pain they never look beyond it right the glimpses are the initial pain but if you just sit in front of the mirror and look at yourself and just whatever thoughts judgment whatever just comes out you just let it you just observe it right it's shadow work like we talked about this chase mm-hmm. um it's that 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 you, you start realizing that those glimpses are just reacting re, uh, reactive you're just reacting to like whatever's going on but if you're committing to that introspection you might find things you didn't even think are there or weren't even aware of it's, it's a really interesting exercise and i'd like to do it Every, every time I catch myself cringing in my glimpse, I take up a minute and just be like, okay. Yeah. And in myself. a more applicable form too, if anyone's out there like wondering like, like how do I practice this? Like I've, I've tried this for a little bit and I should probably practice it more often. But like, like you said, Ofgang, take five minutes in the morning, look in the mirror and just compliment yourself. Like, oh, I love my shoulders, you know, like, and it's crazy because I I um I forget who I got that from. But every time that I would practice that in the morning where I would just stare in the mirror and be like, oh, I love my chest. Like, I love my shoulders. I felt so much better throughout the day and like more humble than if you like didn't take that time to compliment yourself, you know? Yeah, you're practicing self-love. You're, you're treating yourself in the same way you're treating someone you love. And that's important. You know, just like you would compliment someone you like. You got to compliment yourself too, because you are also a person. It's so funny how we will spend so much time uh, watching and assessing other people and even (laughs) watching and assessing. uh, And this can be in your circle or you can literally be watching and assessing people on television. Like it's easy to just turn on someone's YouTube channel and watch their shit for an hour. But it's so hard to just look at yourself in the mirror for one minute. Mm. And even that, the content creators, right? How many content creators are like, oh, I hate looking at the stuff I make. And it's like, why do you make it then? If you can't bear to look at your own things, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Right? What are, you, yeah. what are you running away from? And that is yourself, obviously. One of them is you're running away from yourself. Weird. Yeah, if it's rooted in insecurity, like I like I told you guys the other day, like I I don't listen to our podcast after we have these <laughs> conversations. The other morning I did, and for the first two minutes I was just laughing the whole time because it was just hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But it's not because I'm coming out of a point of insecurity about ourselves. It's just I love how authentic our conversations are together right now, and I don't need to like rehear them because I remember mm. them just like being amazing in, in yeah. the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if anybody's wondering, hey, why the fuck are you talking about all of this stuff you've been talking in the last five minutes? Because we just mentioned earlier how to uh, introspection. And I think all of these things we just talked about, like it's just a gentle reminder is these are the things you can start doing every day to become more introspective. And, and how important is judgment in this? Like, do you guys think like judgment, if you have any sort of judgment towards yourself or others, then you're not going to be able to do any of the work. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, like, let's bring it back to the mirrors. Like if you're in the gym, in the mirror, and you aren't truly looking at just your form from an unbiased perspective, like, oh, oh, I could have 
a little bit more flat back here or something, you're going to judge yourself. You're going to be like, oh, I'm so bad for not having good form. You know what I mean? Like the judgment part can really take over any kind of self-work that you want to be doing on yourself at that point. Yeah. And And I would say judgment comes again from that kind of like running away. It's the resistance to yourself because a judgment reinforces a seed or an idea, I guess that's the same thing, that you have about yourself. And here's a big, big thing. A lot of the judgments we have about ourselves probably didn't come from us. They came from mm-hmm. someone else. Somebody else planted that seed. Something else planted that seed. Oh, I'm this way. Is like, are you really? Oh, I'm, I'm ugly. Or it's like, who told you you're ugly when you were young? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Okay. So, so I think you're both spot on because there is an interconnectedness to judgment. Because if, uh, if we didn't have any social standards for best practices in community, there would mm. be no judgment necessary. But so, 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 Wolfgang, you're saying that anything you judge about yourself was probably imprinted on you early on in your Very life. Very likely. Some experience some- or some person told you something that stuck with you definitely and here's the the dirty this is like this dirty virus that spreads um where in covid (laughs) kind of kind of it is this is this is the systemic covid that that destroys your mind is let's hear it is that i don't think that you can judge other people unless you're judging yourself so therein to to breed Um, judgment into people you have to be someone who's not fully okay with yourself i mean to to go to the gym one more time as a new gym person when i started to like get results i would maybe provide unsolicited advice to people and judge them whereas as a personal trainer who's like well versed in the stuff i like i can still give advice to people but i know it's not cringy yeah it's oh man what's the fucking word what are you pushing your inner image onto other things like self-actualizing? I don't know. Like, uh, no, pu- no something, with P. something with P. Pro- projection. Oh, Projecting, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Projection is fundamental to this because like you said, you can't judge others if you're not fundamentally judging yourself. That's the, and what, what Chase just said was so beautiful because I also went through that same experience where I would walk in the gym And 30 minutes into my workout, I realized I wasn't even present in my workout because I was judging how other people were moving. (laughs) And then I was like, wait a second, wait a second. If I'm judging these people, then that is exactly how I'm judging myself as in that. Like like if I wasn't judging myself in that way, then I wouldn't be judging the others in that way. And so immediately I realized that it was self-judgment. And then when I could notice that and then just love myself fully and be like hey you're perfect you're at the gym right now like let's have a great rest of your session then i would get into this bubble of of like a presentness bubble because it was out of self-love because i'm no longer judging myself and then i didn't even give a shit what the other people were doing i totally forgot that there was other people even in the gym and i feel like that can be related so much into life to where it's like When you're walking around throughout your day and you notice that you're not so present because you're judging others, um, there's a good chance that that can all change if you just love yourself and accept yourself for that. And then that's when all the judgment goes away. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Total. Totally. Man, (laughs) Chase. I mean, I, I just think that like we can just elaborate on this personal judgment a little more. Like I want to see like, cause, cause to where judging other people is coming from Mitchie, like for you in the gym and me in the gym, like, I feel like it's the same damn experience. Um, and I feel like a lot of people have had this, but like the truth is, is that if you were totally comfortable about what you're doing in the gym and your body, then the judgment is like a defense mechanism. It's like, how can I feel better about myself by putting others yeah. down? <laughs> you know, I see that sure. in, um, in my everyday life. Like I'm still so guilty of this where I, like, I love talking to you guys. Cause you're willing to have deep conversations. Like I'll find myself in a room of people who are just talking about the most surface level stuff. And then I'm not present, dude. I just go away into my head and I'm like, 
I can't believe everybody here is talking about such non-substantial information. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, then I go home and watch freaking the office for two hours. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> what substance am I bringing? You know? Yeah. And I'm like, if I was comfortable being a freaking bozo, then we could all be bozos together. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's. Yeah. And, and I noticed recently, I would love to know what you guys think. And then when you do it, like, so, so Chase in that, in that time where you've noticed that you've been judgmental and you bring it back into self-love um, and then you're like in your own bubble and you're doing your own thing and you don't even know other people are around. I've noticed that I can actually come off as an asshole when I'm in those times, some of the time, cause I'm so in my zone. If someone's like, Hey, how are you doing? I like, snap out of like oh hi like how are you or like <laughs> i just can't muster up the words because i'm enjoying myself so much like inside my little bubble that if someone says something like i can't even respond with words and so then like i've had a couple people come to me and be like hey you you're like an asshole you know like they were straight up about it and i was like man i don't mean to be an asshole i'm so insecure with myself that i'm trying to focus on the here and the now that i can't even really pay attention to anyone else cuz i'm so insecure and then they're like oh yeah i i totally understand that and that's only happened twice but it's happened twice in the past couple of weeks and so i it's so weird to be like hey i want to be present and in this bubble but i don't want other people to think that i'm an asshole but then i realize people are going to probably think that you're an asshole no matter what so you might as oh. well just be present oh man people are going to think you're an asshole no matter what <laughs> no matter what I, so I, you're I, saying that you guys know what i'm talking about oh absolutely absolutely um well what we just said right judgment is is a form of projection it comes from projection so people coming to him being like, you're an asshole. There's also a degree there of them. But actually something more important I want to go into is what you did there were like, oh man, I'm just like, just straight up telling them like, oh man, I'm just feeling insecure. And like, this is what's going on. And they're like, oh, I get it. That is a way you can practice authenticity is to take a step back and be like, rather than go into that defensive reactive way of mm. like, Oh no, well you see, uh, this, uh, and then just come up with some bullshit. Hey, you're like an taking asshole a too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, just taking a step back and being like, what am I actually experiencing right now? What am I feeling? What is, you know, fundamentally happening because that's what authenticity resides in the fundamental of, of yourself. And then just being honest with that and just being like, like the thing we're usually the most afraid to say is the one that like will inspire and resonate with others mm. and will make people go, oh, wow, that's a cool person. Because you're like, yeah, I'm actually feeling really insecure now and this is what's going on. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I understand that a lot more than if you just gave me some bullshit answer that doesn't matter. And I know it doesn't matter because I can fucking see it on you, man. So you can do that every day by just taking a step back and just being like, what's going on? And then just being saying that to, to someone like in a conversation or whatever what's going on like um Spot on yeah in in zoom at one point i made a joke and then i put a laughing emoji and then i was like that laughing emoji is stupid and then i went and replied to my own laugh emoji and was like here's why i did that because i thought the joke was not gonna land because it's an obscure reference so then i put the laughing emoji in order to release some pressure off of myself being like haha type thing right and, and it's like taking that moment and just being like oh yeah that's what's actually going on can like Mitch or Chase could look at that and be like, yeah, and be inspired in some way from it. Dude, I loved when you did that. Um, <laughs> Cause I was like, you know, it just the, the willingness to put on display the authentic truth behind actions. Um, like not never judging anybody else for not getting the obscure joke, but just being like, let me take a step back and explain why I self-consciously threw a smiley face in here or like a laughy face, you know, cause I don't, I feel like the joke's not going to land, but I'm just going to be honest about my intentions and yeah. adding authentic dialogue to, uh, to the negative thing that we're trying to overcome enables us to attack it gracefully. Kind of like the way that naming a demon or naming the bad guy in the movie allows you to plot against them. I'm thinking about right. how everyone's afraid to say Voldemort's name. 
And then like, you know, Harry Potter is like, I'll say his name and I'll face him. Like <laughs> name the bad parts. Catch these yourself. hands, Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. When Guardian Love You on your ass, boy. But um, <laughs> dude, being able to uh to look at Leviosa. <laughs> like like Mitchy, you it's being Leviosa. A- Leviosa. Leviosa, dude. Um <laughs> being able to look at like when you said that you know someone came up to you and like said you were an asshole mm-hmm. and then when you just name the demon and you're like oh this is just my this is this is just insecure me. yeah this is just my insecurity like just naming it makes everyone be like oh we're all get it that insecure demon yeah mm. yeah it's it's so there's so much more resonance there and it comes to the point where like somebody will be inspired by it Somebody will uh, be inspired by both you naming it and you doing it. Uh, and maybe some other person will be like, I get it. And then they might give you some advice that like, is that genuine? Because by, do- like, by doing stuff like that, you're automatically like priming people to be that way around you as well. That energy is just so powerful when you're just like, no, no, hold on. Truth. <laughs> mm. It's like everybody just immediately, like they see someone became one of them and just like, I can drop my guard and just be myself. Mm. Everybody just walks like this on the street <laughs> with their guard up all the time. Yeah. So let they see that example, lead by example, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And yeah. good things generally happen. You know, there, there'll so, be people who are like, oh, this person's vulnerable. I can exploit that. So it is what it is. <laughs> well, that's a perfect. Well, so like to recap, so we've said, hey, like we don't want to strive for being humble. Uh, we want to strive to be authentic, right? Because yeah. because humbleness will just come from yeah. being authentic. You won't need to prove yourself when you're authentic. And so when you're authentic, you're vulnerable. And I yes. feel like a couple other words I want to throw in. If you're vulnerable, then you're brave and you're courageous. <laughs> and like. Being brave and courageous, I feel like are words that some people have misconstrued yes. over the past like decades Don't because even get me being, started. <laughs> being, being brave and courageous does not mean that you're you are strong or powerful. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you can be like I feel like it goes authentic, vulnerable, brave and courageous. Authentic, vulnerable, brave and courageous. It's like the top to bottom. Right. So authentic, right, in order it. to yeah. be authentic, we need to be vulnerable. Like, and obviously, yeah, being authentic is at the top. But in order us to be vulnerable, we, we have to be brave and we have to be courageous. Yeah. Like, and I've, yeah, go on. I don't really think I had anything else to say besides <laughs> what you guys think about that. It's um, you need vulnerable to be authentic, you said. Uh, and then you need to be brave. brave and courageous in order to be vulnerable. It's true. You're, here's the thing, people. Uh, if you want to improve yourself, you want to you work on any part of yourself and, and improve that, you're never... I'm going to make a fucking blanket statement as fuck that I actually believe in. You're never going to improve yourself in a meaningful way if you do not learn to be vulnerable first, because being vulnerable will bring out the real things. And then you can know what the real things are you actually want to work on. And if you're not vulnerable, you're going to work on things that aren't even real. You're going to work on the surface and that's going to take you nowhere because you're not going on to the real self. So you need to be, vulnerable even if you're doing it for yourself if you're if you have any sort of strive to improve self-improvement you need to take a step sit down with yourself and just be fucking real how would you do that everything that we've talked about all the exercises already mentioned is a start and uh i guess meditation can help whatever meditation type you can find that works for you um which disclaimer like a lot of people are like meditation doesn't work for me and then they usually go because and then misunderstanding of meditation uh the most common one i hear is like oh i can't just sit down and turn off my brain it's like that's not what meditation is meditation is that letting things out and not like clinging to them uh it's effectively shadow work and that's one form and then you can 
dance and scream and punch things. And that's a form of meditation. If things, as long as things are coming out to, I consider that meditation. Uh, so there is infinite forms present. of meditation. Yes. As things come out, you will become more and more present because the bullshit is just fleeing your head, your body, your essence. Um, so there's infinite forms of meditation. Find what works for you. Uh, and just practicing that, that authenticity um shadow questions as well are, are good but practicing that authenticity authenticity as in like taking that step back and like trying to extrapolate and find what what levels of thoughts are bullshit in your head and what is the source of it all and this takes time but that's fine <laughs> that's not a problem um because it's worth it but that's that's fundamental you want to get anywhere you have to be vulnerable and then you'll get all the benefits from that um Shadow questions. I uh, I wonder if I still have that document around. Can I say Shadow. something about vulnerability real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead while I look for this. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to mention two things about vulnerability before we like tie it all up, which is I think that's that's great that it's a prerequisite to change. And I think a huge barrier to vulnerability that is worth mentioning that like is something that resonates with me very deeply is the fear of sunk cost. Where, uh, you know, sunk cost, meaning like I've been doing something for so long that if I yeah. stop doing it, um, then I'm, uh, you know, I've lost so much time and energy in this in, in quite a way. Like I've been on, on this career path for so long. I can't change it. I've spent so much money creating these widgets. I need to sell them when in reality, like selling these widgets is destroying your life. The sunk yeah. cost is only a barrier between you and opportunity. So like mm. you built a Lego house. And maybe it needs knocked down and entirely restructured. And, but the, you know, the Legos are still there. Like the building blocks of who you are is still there, but like you might be protecting some version of yourself that is inauthentic. Yeah. The best yeah. way I can, uh, I can, uh, first of all, sunk cost is, is, known, is known as a fallacy. And actually mm -hmm. looking up fallacies is good knowledge to have. Not for like debating or argument, arguing or whatever, but like just knowing like traps that you can fall into mentally is really useful. Just, just have more awareness, and the, the 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 cure to sunk cost, I would say, at least based on what Chase said, is you've put the time and effort into this thing, and you're afraid of dropping it because of that. But finishing the thing isn't the value, the inherent value there. The time you just, all the time spent into it, you have already attained the benefits of that. You've already built the skills. You already learned the things. You already know how to do things better than if you didn't put that time into it at all. So you have the building blocks. And if you stop building the cube, you can still start building a triangle or whatever, a pyramid, because you have the same building blocks. So it's okay to not finish something that you know is basically detrimental to you. But the thing about fallacies is you're not really aware of it in the moment. So take everything we just said and apply that to this as well. Yeah, um, I think that that also goes into bravery too. Like, I think being brave is standing up and admitting, like, "Hey, I've spent a lot of time on this, but I know I like." It's just like Tiger Woods' golf swing back in the day, you know. Like, Tiger Woods won a lot of championships with this one golf swing, but but that golf swing turned out not to be sustainable, and so he had to completely rebuild his golf swing. And he sucked yeah. for a couple years, man. Like there were a yeah. lot of people that were like, Hey man, like tigers never got going to come back, but now he's like come back and even better than he was before. But it's because <laughs> he had to be honest with himself at one point. It's like, Hey, yeah, I've spent a lot of time, my whole life up until this point to perfect my golf swing. But I know now that I have to completely just bulldoze that Lego building that, which was that golf swing. And start from scratch and be okay with like not looking pretty for a couple of years. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you can also apply this feature and benefits to like, if you're working on something and you're not sure, what are you gaining from it? What, what is the world gaining from you finishing this? Right. Yeah. Where are like, so if Tiger just dug into his golf swing and kept, uh, kept trying to revise and revise it. Um, what is anyone gaining from that? Wherein like what, he yeah. had to face his, Oh, this is a good thing about bravery too, is that he had to face a fear in order to get there. And like bravery isn't not having fears. Um, like, like bravery 
is having fears and just doing what you're going to do anyway. So he's like, yeah, yeah, the world might respond poorly to me switching my golf swing. And that's kind of scary being like a pro, like literally on the, the greatest cover of, every, of all yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Like doing this is very scary, but I need to do it anyway. So like authenticity yeah. facing, yeah. Ah, man, like I, this little kid, I used to think that bravery meant that you weren't afraid of anything, you know, but now it's like, no, you just are scared and you just go. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. That's a good point. <laughs> We're all scared. Yeah. Um, well, Kenny, you look like you have a list. Yeah, you have a list of shadow questions here. I was I was looking at another thing, but I can't find it right now. I can that's that can be for another time. Is, I have an even deeper list of like you could use for like even figuring out yourself even more. But do what you have so far, people. Like take what we gave you so far and just apply that. Uh, and if you apply all of that, you'll already be in a better place than you were when you didn't. Um so shadow questions. Here's some examples you can just lay down and, and meditate on. And again, the point of shadow work is you observe. It's like you're your own therapist. You let the things come out. You let the information come out and you just observe it. You don't cling to it. You don't try to react to it or defend yourself or go into ego. It can be difficult, but you'll, you'll baseline. If I didn't believe people could, could do things, I would never share any of this. <laughs> so you can do it, whoever you are. Um, so here are some. Why am I not good enough? Uh, why do my parents not love me? And it's entirely my fault. Uh, why do I hate myself? Why do I not deserve success? Why do I deserve to suffer? Why is life hard for me? Why am I unlovable? Why am I toxic? Um, some of these questions might resonate with you. Some might not at all. The best way to do it is you just repeat it uh, out loud as you meditate. And if, if you feel stuff is coming out, You'll feel it if yeah, you're just getting no. Every one of those questions. You just, uh, <laughs> there you like, go. I just, you just do one like uneasy. every week or one a day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you know, if don't feel anything, it's like the whole Enneagram fears and all that. If you don't feel anything, move on to the next question. Then you um, are Buddha and you have achieved enlightenment. No, you just you don't have trauma stored for that particular thing. <laughs> <laughs> There was a say. delicate dance here, man. Um, and we only have a couple minutes left of this chat. We, okay. we might need to do a brief one more because sure. this, there's a dance here, man. Because the shadow work is important, like asking all these questions that evoke like what my traumas are and like what I might need mm -hmm. to overcome and like this roadmap towards uh, the demons that I need to name so that I can confront them. Then there's all this stuff we were saying earlier about look in the mirror and just describe all this positive stuff about you. Like, and now I'm just listening to this and i'm like what do i do do i go ask oh. these really difficult soul crushing <laughs> questions or do i go over to the mirror and compliment my shoulders <laughs> <laughs> what a great it's a delicate dance like you said but it's not even a delicate dance because we gave you both sides so just do both uh actually i have two minutes perfect we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna do this in two minutes hit me uh, a way to practice self-love is uh, fuck, there's some questions, which I'll, I'll, I'll give you the questions next week because I don't have them on me, but I have the concept, which is look at everything you want to do, every decision you're doing day to day, smallest decisions and be like, if this is some like, look at it as another person. Like if I'm doing this, am I going to be happier with myself after I do it? Um, and start, start doing the things that a person you love would do make those decisions we'll talk about it, about it more in the same in the next episode because i'll 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 fucking come with homework like i'll, I'll do my i'll do my research and come at you guys with with real knowledge but uh that's one of them there's, there's ways to practice self-love more than just going into the mirror and being like you're beautiful but that's also important the thing is as you let the bullshit come out it'll become much easier and much easier and much easier over time for you to uh, naturally go, you're beautiful. Your shoulders are great. And it will go from kind of trying to suppress that or like trying to like get a bit of, of enjoyment amongst the suffering is like once the suffering comes out and you've let go of it and you've accepted it, it's gone from your body. The trauma has been released from your body. You can just fill your body up with love and that will come naturally because I think the natural state of the universe is love. Oh man, can I honestly say, say one thing? Dude, please. I feel so much better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Are we still, we are still recording. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're still going. Let's let's do a like let's do a let's do a conclusions and like mm-hmm. closing statements. Man. Okay. Just like you just left us with behind all of this <laughs> is love, right? Which I think Okay. I think um there's a beautiful thing from like Eckhart Tolle where like I kind of was talking about how your features and your scary things are when you miss the mark. The mark being the essence of just the kind of the canvas that reality is painted on. The canvas being love, like accessing love being getting rid of all the the surface bullshit. Um, even like how you describe yourself and getting beyond that and just being here now uninterrupted, like that's love. Yeah. I love that idea. And I love the speaking of love like just my my closing statement on this whole thing is like these different states of existing physically and mentally are there like there are these proven paths and like all this work that we've all each kind of done and all these kind of tips and tricks right that we've that we've thrown throughout this like there's a lot of people who just aren't willing to do that but like that's fine you <laughs> But like, it's not even, it is, I'm about to get passionate guys. It's not even an opinion that your body and your mind are amazing. Like that's not an opinion. That's the fundamental truth. You could go to a store and buy all of the elements and construct a human body and it just wouldn't have consciousness. Like you just could never do it. You could build someone that looks exactly like freaking Mitchell Snyder down to like you just go buy some carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and you assemble it but it just it won't have this consciousness thing and like all these amazing things about your body like if you just pull the cells apart it would wrap around the world us many many times it's such a miracle that it all condensed into you and still scientists can't even explain consciousness and you're unwilling to look in the mirror for one minute and like assess this stuff like I, I know I don't want to throw judgment on anybody and that sounds exactly like what I'm doing, but I'm like, the opposite is like, dude, you are a fucking walking miracle and you have the opportunity to access higher planes within that miracle. And like, I just, I so much want you to do it there. That's the closing statement. Okay. What beautiful. about you, Mitch? That was so beautiful, man. <laughs> it was. It hurts, I agree. dude. <laughs> that's that's love right there what chase just said that's love yeah i hope i think one of the main things that i'm going to be taking from this is like the deepest spiritual experience that you can achieve is enjoying the human experience like just really appreciating the orange juice that you drink appreciating the Netflix that you watch, appreciating that we're able to do all of these human things. And I think if we stay humble about them and the process of going about them and appreciating all of what we can experience as a human, that's the deepest, most spiritual, enlightening thing that we can be. Hmm. Yeah, man, there's a there's a lot of surrendering to what you just said too. Like just, just letting it be. Yeah. Um, okay. You got this ship rolling, dude. I want to know how how you close it. How, <sighs> how, do, we, how do we park this ship? <laughs> <laughs> or gas it up while we're flying still. Yeah, yeah. You are the most beautiful thing I know. in this world go check out patreon <laughs> awesome so that's a commercial yeah so this has been one giant plug to go check out us on patreon i mean if anyone's I hope, still listening i hope you left feeling if, better if, if if you are still listening and like haven't given us a couple stars or a review like That'd be that'd be nice. We have egos that. Yeah, need, Chase, so, tell tell them before we go how they can help this this thing. Yeah, well, you can go develop. write your features and benefits and just assess yourself, and then realize how much that helped you, 
And then you can go leave us a five-star review in the iTunes store or stars on Spotify. Nobody has stars on Spotify yet. That's a new thing. So wherever you can give us stars, we want stars. And that's basically uh, it. I mean, it sounds pretty The more stars too. you you give us, the more we can build the universe. That's the thing, man. Like we need, <laughs> we don't need anything. I we would actually need. just do this because I'm with you guys. But like more people will hear it if it gets yeah. shared. Like that's kind of how things work. So just uh, if someone would find this discussion beneficial, send it to them and uh, give it a review. Exactly. Preferably a positive one. I agree. And I also want to say, boys, what do you think about next week or the week after doing something? Mm, I'll be straightforward to it. A little less woo-woo and a little okay. bit more like tangible. Like what if we came in with like the, the, the major tips or the six tips or seven tips um, of living a healthy lifestyle? And then like each of us can bring from the bozo, from the dad, from the wizard's point of view each ways uh that we can just go one by one and talk about how we can live out like healthy lifestyle and the experiences that we've brought to it oh i love that is that a good one dude let's let's uh let's each bring three yes. and then we'll have nine total yeah that's awesome. good to me It'll be great. He went All so right. deep. It's, it's time to take it a bit back to casual, huh? I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's come up for air. <laughs> uh, All right. So we'll see you guys. We'll come up for air next week. Yeah. And uh, Until we'll then, have a wonderful week. one. And thank yeah. you. Yeah. You guys are beautiful. All right. Yeah. See you next week. Thanks, dudes. <laughs>